In this video, you're going to practice learning how to uh, simplify power to a power rule. And this is actually exponents day two. Day two, the first day we learned negative and zero and multiplying, um, so you added the exponents. So now we're learning about power to a power rule. So when it's power to a power, you're raising um, a variable with an exponent to another power. So you're going to see right here that you're going to multiply your exponents, and that's to just one term inside the parentheses. If you have more than one term inside the parentheses, you need to recognize that you're going to distribute this exponent to each term inside, and you're multiplying the exponents, only the exponents. You're going to leave the base the same. So let's go ahead and look at our first example here on number one. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. In the first example, we have x squared, and all of this is raised to the third power. So if you're taking all of this and raising it to the third power, you're going to be multiplying the exponents here. This is no longer addition because you are not adding or you're not multiplying the bases. So here it's power to a power rule. You're going to take three and multiply it with two. So exponent should become x to the sixth power. In the next example, um, we're going to look at more than just one term inside the parentheses. So example number two, you have b to the fourth power times y to the third, and all of this is raised to the fifth power. So this is like this example up here. If you have two different bases, you need to distribute that exponent to each term inside the parentheses. So we're going to take this exponent of 5 and multiply it with 4, exponent of 5, and multiply it with 3. You only multiply exponents. So you're going to have b, exponent 4 to the, times 5, y, exponent 3 times 5. And it's going to simplify to b to the 20th power times y to the 15th power. In the next example, we have x times y to the 5th power. So here you want to recognize that x has an exponent of 1, y has an exponent of 1. So I'm going to distribute and multiply 5 times 1 and 5 times 1 to each of those exponents. And that's how that's going to look. And then it simplifies to x to the 5th, y to the 5th. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next example over here. In example number 4, we have 2 x squared, and all of this is inside the parentheses, so we are going to take all of this and raise it to the third power. When you raise all of this to the third power, you want to recognize that you have a coefficient. So we're going to distribute, we have to recognize that 2 has an exponent of 1, first of all. We're going to distribute this exponent to each term. So 3 times 1, not 3 times 2, it's 3 times the exponent 1, 3 times the exponent 2. So you distribute each term to each term, and you multiply the exponents and simplify the coefficient. So you're only multiplying exponents here. So we're going to have 2, exponent 1 times 3, and x, exponent 2 times 3. This simplifies to 2 to the 3rd power and x to the 6th power. But this is not our final answer. We need to simplify the coefficient. The coefficient here is 2 to the third power. 2 to the third power means 2 times 2 times 2. Time, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So this should be 8 to the sixth power. If we are confused on how this exponent rule works for the coefficient, the coefficient is the only term that you can put into, into the calculator. So if you put 2 exponent 3, it's going to simplify to 8. So that's how you can use your calculator only for coefficients. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to example number 5. In example number 5, we have negative 3 inside the parentheses x, negative 3x. And all of this is being raised to the third power. So here's where you need to recognize 3 has an exponent of 1, x has an exponent of 1. We're going to distribute 3 times 1 and 3 times 1 only to the exponent. We're not taking 3 times negative 3. We're taking 3 times 1, 3 times 1, the exponents. So we're distributing the exponent to each term inside. We're going to multiply the exponents and simplify the coefficients. 
So here you have negative three, and you wanna keep it inside the parentheses because that will change your answer if you don't. Um, and all of this is gonna be raised to one times three x raised to the one times three. So it's gonna to simplify to negative three, still in parentheses, raised to the third power. So what this means is I'm taking negative three, that should be read as negative three times negative three times negative three. So you wanna understand, oops, that this is two negatives and then you have a third negative. So your answer should be negative when it comes out. If it's not, you did something wrong because there's parentheses. It's showing that you're taking this whole entire negative three and raising it to the third power. If it's an odd power, it should come out to th a negative. X to the third because you multiplied one times three. So negative three raised to the third power is going to end up to be negative 27 X to the third power. And in the last example, you have 4x squared y, z squared, z, I'm sorry, z to the third power, and all of this is raised to the second power. So we're going to multiply the exponents and simplify the coefficient. Here, 4 has an exponent of 1, so we're taking 2 times the exponent 1. x has an exponent of 2, so 2 times the exponent 2. y has an exponent of 1, so 2 times the exponent of 1. And z has an exponent of 3, so 2 times the exponent 3. So what that looks like is 4 squared, because 4 has an exponent of 1 times 2 is 4 squared. x, 2 times 2, y, exponent 1 times 2, z, exponent 3 times 2. So this is going to simplify to 4 squared is not 8. 4 squared means 4 times 4. So again, use a calculator just to make sure. 4 squared is going to be 16 x is going to have an exponent of 4, y squared, and z to the 6th power. In these last few examples, I'm going to go ahead and do them um, through on the video. So here on example number 7, you want to be careful because you have 2 on the outside of the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we have negative 3e, e, and all of that is raised to the 2nd power. So this is power to a power, but if I have a 2 on the outside, I can't do anything with my 2. It's not in the inside of the parentheses, so I'm going to bring it straight down. This exponent is only being applied to the each term inside the parentheses. So I'm going to take 2 and multiply it with the exponent 1, 2 multiply it with the exponent 1. So again, I'm going to keep negative 3 on the inside of the parentheses, taking my exponents and I'm multiplying. E exponents and multiplying. So now this simplifies to, to 2 times negative 3 squared and e to the second power. Now I just need to simplify the coefficients. So negative 3 squared means it's negative 3 times negative 3. So I'm taking 2 and I'm multiplying it with negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, e squared. Still, you need to simplify. 2 times 9 is 18, e squared. This is your final answer. Example number 8, we have 5 x times 2x squared, and all of this is being raised to the third power. Again, if this is on the outside of the parentheses, you bring it straight down. You can't do anything with it. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to distribute this exponent and multiply only the exponents. So I'm going to have 2 exponent 1 times 3 x exponent 2 times 3. Again, bring down your 5x, 2 is going to have an exponent of 3, x is going to have an exponent of 6 when I multiply. Now I just need to simplify from here. This x has an exponent of 1, so I wanted to go ahead and put that out there. What this means is that I need to take 5 and I need to multiply and simplify my coefficients. 5 times 2 to the third power. This doesn't mean that I'm going to take 2 and multiply it with the exponent of 1 and 2 times 5. No. This, I'm taking 5 times 2 to the third power, and then my x is, I have x to the first and x to the sixth. So what I want to recognize is that this is multiplication. So now I'm moving from product of powers to the multiplication rule, where you add the exponents. So here if I have 5, 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then here for my x's, I'm going to be adding my exponents now. So 5 times 8 is 40. x 
should have an exponent of 7. This is my final answer. On the next example, I'm going to be taking 9 times, I'm sorry, not 9. This is example number 9. 3x squared y to the 5th times negative 2xy to the 3rd times, or all of this is being raised to the 3rd power. Again, only the terms inside the parentheses that this power is being raised to will be multiplied with the exponent of 3. All of this will come straight down. So we have 3x squared y to the 5th. I'm taking negative 2, and I'm taking my exponents. 1 times 3, 3. I'm taking my exponents. 1 times 3, 3. For y, I'm taking the exponent. 3 times 3, 9. So that's the only exponent that you will multiply with. Now we just need to simplify from here. So again, I can't do anything with this first piece, so I'm going to bring it straight down. 3x squared y to the fifth. Negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Again, if I need to figure this out, I can say negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Positive 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. So this is a negative 8. x cubed and y to the ninth. And you can use your Desmos calculator to verify, but you need to use parentheses. So parentheses, negative two, close parentheses, exponent three, and you get a negative eight. So know the difference between the two. And so here we need to simplify. Um, we're gonna be multiplying the coefficients and adding the exponent. So we're taking three times negative eight. We're taking the like base of x and adding the exponents two plus three. And now we're taking the like base of y and adding the exponent of 5 plus 9. So 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. x, add the exponents 5. y, add the exponents 14. This is your final answer. Now we're going to go ahead and apply this to some real world problems. And so in these last three questions, we're going to be dealing with area, volume, and area. So find the area of a rectangle. So area is length times width. If the length is 8m cubed, all of this is raised to the second power, and the width is 4x squared, m to the fourth. So we're going to take 8m cubed, all of this is raised to the second power, times 4x squared, m to the fourth power. So I need to say that this is an exponent of 1 and distribute my exponents. So 8 Exponent 1 times 2 is 8 squared. M, multiply my exponents, 3 times 2 is 6. And all of this is being multiplied to 4x squared, m to the fourth. If it, this is multiplication now, I need to remember to add my exponents here. So I'm going to multiply the coefficients and add my exponents. So 8 squared times 4 I'm taking m to the 6th power and adding to the 4th and m squared, x squared. There's nothing I can do with x because there's no other like term, so I just bring it straight down. 8 squared is 64. 64 times 4 is going to be 256 m to the 10th power and x squared. This is the area for that rectangle. In the next example we have to find the volume of a cube. The volume of a cube is taking the side and cubing it. So if the side measure is negative 9 k to the third, kx to the third, I'm going to take negative 9 kx to the third power and raise all of this to the third. So this is power to a power. Exponent 1, exponent 1, distribute and multiply with each term. So I'm taking negative 9, 1 times 3 is 3 k, 1 times 3, to the third power. x, 3 times 3, is 9. So you simplify negative 9 cubed is negative 9 times negative 9 times negative 9. Negative 729, k to the third power, x to the ninth power. And this is the volume. I'm not going to do the last example because it's just like the number 10, so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys practice now.